lung cancer can happen to anyone. Lung cancer, I, I mean, even just cancer itself, it's not biased, it's not prejudiced, it doesn't care what you look like, it doesn't care what race you are, what religion you are, anything. Cancer is cancer and it will attack anyone. So I'm Lauren Poy, um, I'm 25 years old. My hobbies include um, hiking, I love running, I love biking, um, doing some arts, music, and hanging out with my dog and my family. When I was younger, um, all of my friends, including my twin sister, had grown out of their asthma. I never had any asthma issues. But then when I was around nine or 10, I started struggling to breathe all the time, like when I was exercising or just, just anything. And then I would have bronchitis and pneumonia multiple times each year, to the point that I would have to be like on an air mask, for like a nebulizer, like not just a simple nebulizer, but like a full on air mask um, and miss a lot of school. Um, and as I grew into a teenager and going to college, um, my asthma only got worse. And so they kept giving me different inhalers, different medication. I got more and more bouts of bronchitis and pneumonia. Um, and I would spike these random fevers out of nowhere. And I just had this chronic wheeze that would never go away um, to the point that everyone kept calling me wheezy and like every breath, it would just be constantly wheezing, um, which is hard when you love hiking and running and doing all the sports. And when I was in sixth grade, my I went to like a, just a primary doctor appointment and they took some blood work from me and my blood work came back um, with low red blood cell counts and abnormally abnormal white blood cell counts. I don't remember if they were low or high or what was going on. So they sent me to um, the hospital, which then they sent me to a different hospital because they were telling me that I had leukemia. But then they sent me home that night and nobody ever followed up with me on it. It felt definitely in 2021 is when I really started to realize it wasn't asthma. Um, but I trusted my doctors and but I, I would definitely tell my parents and everything that these inhalers aren't working for me. This this medication that they're giving me isn't working. I get bronchitis. They give me antibiotics. And then a week later, I have, you know, they give me more antibiotics. And I had some like leg pain going on for a couple of years. And I just thought it was like varicose veins or whatnot. But any like my legs just hurt so much. Um but breathing wise, it wasn't as much pain as it was just like a constant tightness. Like it always felt like something was like squeezing me. Um, and in 2021, I have always been a great swimmer. And I went to go jump in a lake with my boyfriend and his friends. And I immediately hit the water and started drowning. And I couldn't breathe. I was just blacking out. So they dragged me back to shore. And since that day, I just kept getting more and more sick. And I just figured it was because I worked with kids. So I was just getting sick. But um, I had, they treated me for bronchitis, then a sinus infection, then pneumonia, then an upper respiratory infection. So I had four rounds of antibiotics. And then I kept spiking these fevers and they kept telling me it could be COVID, but I, I never tested positive for COVID. Um, and so... On November of 2021, I was at work and they sent me home early because I had a long sleeve shirt on, a sweatshirt, a jacket, my 30 below sleeping bag. And I was just shaking. I drove myself to the emergency room. I had 104 degree fever. They tested me for every blood disease there was. They took a chest x-ray and they found out that I had a collapsed lung, which explained, you know, the reoccurring infections because my lung was, it, the infection was trapped in my lung. And um, they just told me it was a mucus plug or scar tissue that was causing the collapse lung and that it will go away. But at that point, it was like three months of being so extremely sick that I'm, I, and I knew I had lung cancer. I just kept telling everyone, I think I have lung cancer. We just said, me and my mom just said, we are not leaving until we get a CAT scan book. So a month later, they booked my CAT scan and they told me to wait. And it was a Friday night. And they told me to wait until Monday, Tuesday for my results. But before I even finished driving home, they had called me and told me that I had a tumor. And they wanted me to go see a specialist right away. But the specialist they wanted me to see was booked all the way until April. So they set up an appointment five months after telling me that I had um, a tumor. I mean, the next Monday when I was at work and I called my insurance company and I just begged them to send me a list of every single specialist in the area. And they sent me a, um, a four page list and me and my mom that day 
called every single number on the list and only one place uh, picked up and took our phone call and they had me into the hospital um, within two days. I was not comfortable with the fact of knowing that they had missed it for how many months. I had a collapse long at that point now since probably September and I was December and then they wanted me to wait another five months. Like my lung is collapsed, <laughs> you know. I had seen my primary care doctor so many times and I had mentioned to him that I thought it was lung cancer. And he was like, "You, it's not cancer. Like you're too young. You don't smoke. You don't live with anyone who smokes. Yeah. But of course, then he had to say like, it could be, but I'm just telling you it's not. So um, I have seen him a couple of times since, and it's definitely been a very different type of relationship. Um, he's apologized, you know, obviously so much for it but he's I mean even my oncologist and all my doctors still there's no explanation for why I have lung cancer it's not genetic in my case I don't have any of the gene mutations I don't have like any of the I don't live with smokers I've never lived with smokers you know your body more than anybody else does the doctors can see the test results they can see you physically but ultimately you know your body and um, when I was telling everybody that I thought I had lung cancer, even my parents were like, no, you, no, you don't. And I'm like, mom, dad, you know, you see me here. I'm coughing up, you know, different colors. I'm very sick. Um, but just, you again, you know your body and you have to push for it. The doctors don't want to have you, like, they don't want, they want you to get better and they want you to feel better. Sometimes it's it's just easy to miss something, especially for your age and for your lifestyle like it's easy to miss something but um just force for it like my mom is a nurse and so luckily she was with me that day that I we found out I had a collapse lung and she just kept saying hey I know I know this routine you know we want a cat skin and we want it now so if you have to force it force it you know it's that simple I mean the hospital beds yes they want you to go in and get out as fast as possible so they can take more and more and more patients because a lot of people go to the hospital for help but you are also there for help so if you need to kind of be pushy and kind of be, you know, annoying, so be it. You need the help you <laughs> to get it. And it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's not simple, but if you need it, you need it. So I had my first CAT scan where they found the tumor on December 17th of 2022. And I went into Leahy Hospital to see my specialist on December 28th. Um, and that morning when I went in, they quickly, before the doctor even like said hello to me, he came in the door and just asked me if I ate breakfast that morning. And I said, you know, I had some cereal and coffee. And he's like, if you didn't, I'd be putting you into an emergency bronchoscopy right now to get that tumor out because that needs to leave right now. So a week later, they, on January 6, 2022, um, they did a bronchoscopy to remove most of my tumor um, and they biopsied it. And, but they left some of it in there because it was just too dangerous to take it all out during a bronchoscopy. So um, they took enough out that my lung could open back up and the airway, because it was completely blocking off my airway and my right lung. So it's just a quick um, procedure. They put you under and they go down through your throat and um, they were able to go into my airway and my lung and kind of like cut out the tumor. And then they were able to remove it and biopsy it that way. So it was very quick. I think I was only under for like maybe 45 minutes. So then on January 10th, I was at work with a bunch of four and five year olds. And I had an email from the hospital. And I figured it was just a bill. But the email just said um, your tumor had tested positive um, for bronchial and lung cancer. Yeah. So I had for CD, it was CD56 positive, which is a neuroendocrine tumor. They had told me that it looked like it was probably growing for about 12 years. And so that's what kept making my asthma get worse and worse. Um, yeah. And why I grew into asthma when everybody was growing out of asthma, but it was actually just a tumor slowly blocking off the air. Grew more towards like inwards into the big hole of the bronchial instead of like the lung. But it's a very slow growing tumor is what they said. And a lot of doctors kept telling me they're like, it's the good type of tumor. And I'm like, is there a good type of cancer? Is there like, you know, and people kept saying like, it's the, your cancer was kind to you. It grew slow and took your time. And I'm like, you know, we could have caught it earlier, <laughs> but so when I got the diagnosis, um, I, I left work and I remember just crying in the car with my mom for like five minutes and I turned to her and I'm like, this is crying. Isn't going to do anything. You know, we need to, what can we do to, be proactive about this. And so my oncologist had told me, she called me later that night and um, knew that the email went out and she was very mad that somebody had sent the email to me. And that's how I found out that I had cancer. But 
she was telling me that the next steps were going to be to remove the rest of that tumor. So they, at that point, they thought that it was only going to be like removing two inches of my lung. Um, so we were getting ready for that. And then they sent me to another, to the surgeon. So I had appointments with some different surgeons and he was looking through my case and um, he said that they would have to most likely remove the whole lower right lung lobe. It was growing so much into the, that area that they would have to remove it and just to, in case it was spread or anything. And they kept um, telling me all these things that I wouldn't be able to do after the surgery, things I could do after surgery, like my lifestyle was going to change forever at the age of 24. And um, I went into surgery on March 15th and I woke up um, with my lower lobe missing and my middle right lobe missing. So two of my lung lobes, because the tumor just started to regrow into my middle lobe as well as the lower lobe. So it was just a lot of doctor's appointments, more PET scans, CAT scans, um, x-rays. Um, this is where they removed my lobes. Um, I have five different scars going all over here and pretty much the robotics um, cut in between the rib cages where they used to have to pry open the ribs. So they cut in between the rib cages to remove the lung, they cut it out and then they pulled it out and um, put a chest tube in and you know stitched it back up. So that was a lot of just, you know, pain medications, a lot of all these different medications and sleeping. And I kept forcing myself to get up and walk um, to the nurse's station, to the end of the hall. Just I kept forcing myself to get up and walk because I just I couldn't stand just laying there and knowing that things were going to change. I wanted to go back to normalcy as soon as possible. <laughs> when I, I had two months of medical leave after my surgery. And so I just had a lot of free time and um, on my walks, as I kept trying to extend them further and further, like I used to, I would do on my first day after I got home from the hospital, I'd do like maybe like a quarter mile and then go back, you know, and keep building and building and building. And then a lot of it was that I am so young um, that my body could recover and that I did have a very active and healthy lifestyle before my surgery. So now what's left of my right lung is slowly starting to expand back into that space that my two other lobes were removed from. So I think that's helped a lot. Um, yeah, I honestly think it was just a lot of determination and not giving up into this because cancer can take so much from you. It took my lung. It took, you know, part of my breath away, but it can't take anything else away from me. I still don't always feel very recovered. Like I still get pain and my scar tissues and everything and even like down towards my stomach area um and they said that's normal because of my age like my um, nerve cells are still young and everything and where most people who get the surgery are older and they their nerve cells are dying so it's not as painful for them but I was again they wanted me to stay for a week but because I was doing so well and forcing myself to get up and move and walk um they sent me home two days after my surgery and at that point, I forced myself to get up and walk at least five times each day to the end of the driveway, to the end of the street. And um, two, uh, less than two months after my surgery, I went to go do a 5K and I ended up winning the 5K. So I was back um, at that, doing that stuff within two months. And it was just honestly just pure determination. Every time that I get like a cold, I remember when cold and flu season was coming back around for the first time since I only had one lung and I was so scared. Like I still wear my mask all the time during cold and flu season. I'm still, even if I'm like going to really public places, I'm still like the only person in a mask, but I'm just, I'm petrified still of getting um, sick. Knock on wood, I haven't had COVID yet, but um, I'm definitely petrified if I ever get COVID because it's a disease that attacks your lungs. And, you know, when I was getting diagnosed and when I was super sick, it was 2020, it was 2021. I was diagnosed in 2022. So it was just like so scary to know that I had lung cancer and there's this disease going around that attacks your lungs. And I had to go to all my doctor's appointments alone because they wouldn't let anyone to the hospitals. Um, and luckily after my surgery, they allowed my parents to come and see me in the hospital. But um, yeah, it was definitely very um, scary and it still is very scary. I'm definitely still processing it. Um, even when sometimes I'll like brush up against my scars with my fingers and I like freak out. I'm like, what is this on my body? Um, it's uh, every day. And I would say it takes up the majority of my thoughts each day that um, whether it's positive thoughts, like I can't believe I have one lung and I'm doing this. Um, or like I just did a half marathon in Alaska and 
I, the doctors had told me that I would never run again or that um, I would never hike again. So I've gone every time I hike a mountain, I'm like, feel I feel so proud of myself and so accomplished. Um, but even just day to day things, I it's either I'm petrified of what's going to happen, but um, then I'm proud of myself that I made it through it another day each day. Like I don't have any signs of more cancer, um, which is awesome. Um, I'm still doing, I did CAT scans once every three months and then it was once every six months and now it's once a year. So when I have my scan days, I take the full day off of work, even if I don't need it, even if I'm feeling confident and fine and I don't need the whole day off, I take it off anyways. And I go to, I try to make it as early as possible for the appointment so then I can just get it over with quickly and spend a day doing things that I want to do. So I'll go um, get my scan and then I go and I buy myself like uh, I treat myself only to like fancy coffees only on scan days. Just make it into a celebration as well as something to look forward to. Oh, I do have my scan that day, but once I know it's a scan, I get to go and do this. You know, I have this to look forward to. A lot of things that I've learned from the lung cancer community is that lung cancer can happen to anyone. Lung cancer, it, I mean, even just cancer itself, it's not biased, it's not prejudiced, it doesn't care what you look like, it doesn't care what race you are, what religion you are, anything. Cancer is cancer and it will attack anyone. And it doesn't matter if you've smoked, it doesn't matter if you live the healthiest life, It could, you have lungs and anyone with lungs can get lung cancer. Just like anyone with skin can get skin cancer, anyone with breast can get breast cancer. It's, it's just, something that happens and it's a shame that a lot of people you know when I tell them I had lung cancer they ask me well who in your family smoked or you know how much did you used to smoke and well I've never had and no one in my family has so um, I just really would love to just keep spreading the word that anyone with lungs can get lung cancer and most of the people that I know with lung cancer have never been a smoker I think I know one person out of the like 50 people I've met with lung cancer who have, who has been a smoker. So it's, and it's on the rise. Lung cancer is on the rise for a lot of young people and females especially. And it's the number one cancer killer in the world. It claims more lives annually than breast cancer, prostate cancer, and colon cancer combined. So it, and nobody seems to really care about it because they just have this assumption. That's what we learned in high school with that. You can only get it from smoking. And that's why I went back to my high school back in April, this April and I went and I guess spoke at one of their events just to kind of let the kids know like it's so much more than a smoker's disease. Like when I was here, I was only told it was from smoking and I avoided cigarettes my whole entire life. And here I am, you know, everyone's story is different. And I know sometimes people and at least the lung cancer community see me and see me going out and running and doing hiking and everything while they're not. Everyone's story is different. This is my story. I'm still suffering all the time with this, but it's all ultimately up to you what you do with your story and your message. Um, so you can make your mess and make it into a message, honestly. I run and I hike for those people that can't do it. And I do it for my friend who passed away two years ago from lung cancer. And she kept telling me that, you know, like, I want to one, one day go up and meet you and, you know, let's go for a walk, let's go for a run. You know, I saw that you did something today and it motivated me to get up and off the couch for the first time in a long time. And I just want to prove to people that, you know, the doctors can tell you all the things that you can't do. They have a list of the can't, 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 can't. And you can, and, you know, again, you know your body. So if you feel like you can go and do one of those things, do it. Push yourself a little bit harder each and every day and yeah it's okay to fail it's okay to cry it's okay to be upset with us you know we have cancer it's a, it's it's terrible we have cancer and there's nothing we can do about the fact that we have cancer but there's so much that we can do with the fact that we have cancer and that could be making a positive difference